Okay, so I'm recording Hi, it now. I, a little late in the game. Um, <laughs> we have, we That's have a. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so we made a set of agenda topics on the fly, and we've just reviewed the charter and revised it slightly, and then all sort of approved it. So um, these links are, are up there, and uh, in the Zulip chat, um, and. I'm, I'm going to put in the actual chat session the um, the actual links to the two things, or if I can find them. Actually, could someone else post in the chat the two? Do you know if a meeting recordings, if it helps to post in the chat for the meeting recordings? I've never looked at a, at a Zoom meeting recording to, to know like whether the chat messages show up in some fashion in the recording. So maybe this is not a useful way. I've been wondering how long I can send text usefully. I have a vague recollection that you get like a .txt file or something alongside the video recording, but I'm not sure that that's terribly useful. So. No, that's probably not that useful then compared to the Zoom stream that we already have. Never mind then. Okay, it was more like I was curious if somebody like watching the recording would see like, oh, this this chat message was sent or something. I, I think you can if you record it, you, you can you get a TXT. I don't know if you're talking about like a, you can download them with software with like with video uh, reproduction software. You would get like a kind of subtitles. I'm not going to do any post process, but I'm not going to put the effort in. So that's not going to be the answer here. It was more like the Zoom do anything, anything cute to make this really trivial. And the answer is, it sounds like yeah, the answer is no. What I'm saying only, only happens if you write in the, in the Zoom chat. But uh, like, I don't know, maybe a link or something at some point. Right. I don't know, maybe that may help. OK. Uh, obviously, I don't know, know enough about this to, be, to use it usefully. Um, it's OK. We've got information in the Zoom, in the, in the uh, Zulip stream topic about this. Um, right. So um, let's see here. Um, the other thing then, uh, so is that we, yeah, we said we made a slight change to the charter and now we're gonna move on to the next agenda topic. Um, oh, we, we talked a little bit about this, this meeting cycle. We all sort of agreed we'll try a bi-weekly, a, a weekly meeting, but the timing will, will, will alternate each week so that effectively um, we'll expect to see uh, Nick, Nick here every other week and hopefully we'll see David here um, on the alternating weeks. We have, haven't established the alternate meeting time yet. I'll uh, make a, a, a action item to um, let's see here. Action, actual, action items. Um, we need to actually come up with this, the second meeting time for the second meeting. Accommodate David CO. Um, okay, and uh, yeah. <laughs> But that's all. We sort of already agreed to that. That's good. And now, um, next agenda item was um, what project groups to try to spin up to, um, you know, jump in with first. Um, um, I'm curious to know what you all are most interested in doing. There's, there's a. We can either quickly write down what projects I think are the most important, but, um, or we could just have everyone sort of talk about what they think their own what where their own interests lie and what they'd be like like to spearhead. Um, maybe we can start with Wesley. Um, so I guess I'm coming at this mostly from the mirror optimization perspective. We are trying to land various mirror optimizations and we often run into issues with uh, our incremental, at least our incremental benchmarks. Um, <laughs> so I know we had, we had a meeting, um, what was that probably about a month ago or two months ago? Um, kind of talking through what the current issues are with that. Um, I don't think we really got to solutions in that meeting. Um, so I, I think for me, I personally would be interested in trying to figure out, you know, what can we do um, with our code gen partitioning specifically to kind of minimize some of the issues that the mirror op team is, run, is running into. Um, I feel like there's honestly some probably low hanging fruit there if we can find the right tweaks to make to the current algorithm. So um, that's something that I'm, I'm kind of focusing on, but would definitely appreciate input and ideas and things like that. So um, that might be an appropriate project group to spin up. Uh, I can I can happily help with that because well I, I also uh, uh, my main focus uh, of my participation in the compiler has been mere optimizations and that's how I met Wesley and um, 
and uh, yeah I, I also feel that we we have we we should have something big to gain somewhere hopefully low hanging from the code and partitioning schemes and uh, i depending on uni because i i i, I am waiting on bureaucracy bureaucracy. Uh, I should be starting my thesis on um, Mirops soon-ish, I hope, but uh, I, I, I want to help, uh, I want to help you Wesley at least, uh, at least brainstorming, I don't know. So, okay. um, count me in. Okay. Um, all right, so that's, that's sort of like, that sounds to me like you're interested in sort of working on the things that what Wesley's talking about then, right? Or mis misinterpreting that, yeah, okay. Um, um, all right, and uh, from my perspective, I, I also have been interested in the, in the cogen unit stuff, but I'm happy to let other people take focus on that because there's other, the other big one is the purification um, work to, to try to make more parts of the compiler make use of the query system um, and to identify maybe problems that are, that are arising where the query system isn't acting as incremental as it should be. So I've been meaning to sort of understand that part of the system better and I'd be, I'd be happy to try to um, fire off a project there. I know because in particular because I know that there's some work, there's some other people that have either made pull requests or proposals for major changes involving the query system that would be relevant here. So that's sort of the other big area that um, I think I've been, I've been strongly encouraged, I think is the right phrasing, to, to, to look there for some low hanging fruit because um, Nico in particular, I think, thinks that that's a good avenue to explore um, for things to fix here. Um, okay. Um, I think sort of related to that, I've, I've definitely seen a small handful of PRs that have tweaked um, what things are included in the incremental cache, like which query results are included in the incremental cache and which ones are not. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's faster to recompute things than it is to actually serialize them to disk and deserialize them back or vice versa. Um, so there's, there's potentially some improvements to be made there as well. Okay. Okay. I can definitely believe that to be the case. Um, okay. Any other, uh, Thoughts from, from Nick or anybody? So my motivation is just compile times in general. And I <clears> don't <throat> have much in the way of preconceived notions other than I just have this gut feeling that incremental isn't working as well as it could. Yeah. <laughs> just like, you know, you do a full compile and it takes a certain amount of time and then you change one line and it takes half as long maybe. And it just seems like... That doesn't seem right, yeah. Maybe yeah. You know, it's like there's room for... So I think that's why we're all here in some ways, yeah. <laughs> but um i mean my work is generally heavily profile driven so like i don't have much in the way of preconceived notions of what what is likely to help you think uh, of the profile you think that the information you're getting from the profiles uh, i'm curious to know like whether there's changes you should make to our instrumentation in some fashion to make profiling more useful for stuff in incremental i don't know what wesley you've done a lot of work with like the, the self-profile stuff so maybe you have a better idea here of what the problems are, but um, something that came to my mind is something we might need to look at, though I know nothing about what we might do. Um, I mean, I, so I'm definitely interested to hear what, what Nick has to say, but um, at least from my perspective, there's not necessarily a ton of information exposed to our self-profiler about um, incremental performance other than just kind of high level metrics like how long it's taking to serialize or deserialize stuff or how long code gen's taking or whatever. Um, 
kind of related to my first point, it would, or like the project group that I kind of want to spin up, it would be useful for me to have easier to understand or at least easier to look at information in maybe an unstable, you know, debug option or whatever about what's going in the code gen units and how big they are and how long they're taking to compile. You can get a lot of that with tracing uh, with the right, you know, Rusty log trace flags or whatever, but um, it's kind of painful to sift through, especially if you're trying to figure out, you know, where did, where did this thing, where did this function come from or whatever. And there's like all these different places that can pull it in and, you know, it's, um, it's a lot more work than it probably really should be to do serious investigation, you know, as to, as to what's in our code gen units and why they're taking so long to compile. But. Okay. So I haven't done very much profiling that's sort of um, of incremental. Like, I've, like if you look at incremental with external tools, I, I haven't used the self profiler that much. Mm -hmm. Like you get the obvious things like there's hashing costs and there's serialization costs. Um, and I've done some stuff to speed those up, but like, I haven't looked into the actual what incremental is doing and like trying to just work out is, is it recomputing things that it shouldn't, or is it, you know, is there something going wrong in that sense? Um, so I, I haven't done, I haven't looked at incremental profile results very much at all. That's fine. Um, that's fine. I uh, think that it's just something we should definitely keep in mind is something that, you know, if there's things we can do here to make that better, then we should explore it. Um, okay. Um, well, it sounds then like the most immediate things to look at are the, the you know, the, the cogen unit partitioning and, uh, and like I said, the query system. Um, and then if we can on the long, along the way discover other potential projects to, to mm, spin up, we can do that. Um, but most obviously that seems like Wesley and, and Felix, I don't, there's probably another way to refer to we, you and I, Felix, is um, our first name from that credit. Um, <laughs> how do you pronounce we'll, your we'll last find, name? We'll find is it uh, Fisher? How do you pronounce your last name? Is it Fisher? Uh, Fisher. Uh, it, yeah, I don't know. Um, like uh, here we speak Spanish, so it would be like um, uh, Fisher. Fisher. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, like. Not that we have to use last names. I just figure I, you know, got some way to uh, yeah. get our, our references here. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Um, and, oh, Santiago, was there anything that you, any other things that you thought you might like to explore or any of these other things we've talked about that you might like to be involved with? Yeah, no, like, um, like the, the code chain partitioning is, is something that sounds interesting, but uh, also like the query system stuff. So maybe like you can add me there, like in the query system, like idea, okay. I don't know. Okay. If you want it also like, but both things are interesting to me and I don't have any other big idea well you know you could also just sort of be aware of what's going on in both project groups and uh take on <laughs> tasks as they, as they come up it's up to you um okay so i i have a vague recollection of seeing some issues somewhere on the issue tracker about incremental uh being unnecessarily invalidated because like for example you add a new line at the top of your file and every single span in the file all the debug info, whatever, all has to be recalculated, essentially. Right. I don't know if that's still true or not, but- um, There was somebody who was working, I believe there was somebody who had was doing work to try to address this. Um, I can't remember the name of the, the contributor. I think they actually, um, I think they were expressed interest in, in being part of you know this this stream, or maybe I, just, maybe I invited them. I can't remember now whether they actually responded to us. Um, but I, this is something that someone's put work into trying to fix. Okay, okay but, but it has not been fixed. I'm pretty sure. That um, seems like maybe another avenue of attack there. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, um, definitely. Um, I, I, I have a I have a question for you guys because you you probably 
uh, know a lot more about this than me. Um, how, so in theory, like assuming everything is like much better than it is right now, how long should it take to recompile a project if you add one line? Like, uh, and take take the the worst case line that you can think of. Like, how how long should it take? Like, um, should it be like sort of constant? Should it be like bounded? Well, I, I, when you say add one line, you mean what one blank line, or do you mean one line with content in it? One line of content. I mean, one, one one line that does that does something, and. and I mean, like maybe a, a function call or whatever. Or it could be very call. bad. That's the kind of thing where once you say it's one line that does something, that could be something that you know adds a new um, trait implementation. Like there's different things they could do that could have effects on the whole type inference system. Um, so I, mm. I don't want to put like you know ideas about goals there that are based on you know putting bounds on performance with arbitrary single lines, even realistic lines, because mm. I don't know if it's realistic of us to expect a bound there um because mm. of the nature of our type system um, i, mean, I think it's that. it's a good question though because i have i have very little sense of this too and, and if there are like different kinds of changes that would have different kinds of effects that's the sort of thing that might be useful to know or have written down in a document perhaps that's true uh, like if it's okay. if it's a single line within a function is that different to if you change the function signature or uh, I, you know i'm just guessing here yeah. You know, if it's a public yeah. function versus a, a private function or... Yeah, yeah, because I have the feeling that, I don't know, if you, if you change <laughs> uh, greater than to a greater or equal than in an if, and that's it, that, that's all that you do, the change, like the, 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 the cost of recomp recompilation should be very small, right? And so, but I... I that, that's that's the notion that I'm missing. Like, how 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 small should a trivial like I I did nothing, so I expect the the compiler to take no time, almost. Right. Th that's the notion I, I I don't have. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, that does make sense. That's actually interesting because I don't think any of our benchmarks today, that the, the greater than, the greater than equal, you know, I don't know if any of our benchmarks measure a change like that. We do things like adding a print line, which, you know, actually is pretty expensive in terms of the amount of code associated with it ends up, you know, being generated for that. But the idea of just changing a greater than or greater than equal is a much more, is a very interesting, really minimal um, delta to explore. That's something that we probably should be benchmarking, but I don't think we are. Um, yeah. So for so for the benchmarks, like quite a lot of our benchmarks, we have one incremental thing where we add a print line, basically. Um, there's one regex where we have something like eight different incremental scenarios. So that's sort of like the deep example. Um, quite a few benchmarks have been added and like an incremental scenario just didn't get, just didn't get added. So some of them don't have an incremental thing at all, other than just, you know, build from scratch. Um, so the benchmarking story for incremental is, probably weaker than it could be. Yes, I think that's definitely true. Um, I think I personally would like to see more uh, kind of user scenario driven incremental benchmarks, like, you know, pick, pick some sort of a representative test of a user is working on a crate or whatever, and they do something, you know, that would that would make sense. And then they build. How long does that take? And then they make another change. How long does that take? And they make another change. How long does that take? Um, the print line seems kind of artificially contrived. I mean, there's there's definitely use cases for doing that, but um, you know, I think kind of to to uh, Felix nine one gr's point, like you know, if you are fixing a bug in a function. And you're, that's the only change you make. How long does that take to build? Um, or you change the body of a private function somewhere in the crate. How long does it take to build? So, like having having the, the print line as our standard like benchmark is probably not 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 a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's something we should perhaps look at. I don't. I, 
I hesitate to say spin up a whole project around this, but at the same time, it's a, it is a super important thing and it, it's going to dictate a lot of the other work we do. Um, so yeah, let's, I think we, we probably could deal with, um, exploring this a little bit better. Um, you know, maybe as an action item for a week from first, like, you know, for our meeting from two weeks from now, is this something we could get some, like some people just looking at the, um, you know, see, seeing about an alternate benchmark suite and uh, putting so, something under there? So I'd be happy to look at it because I'm quite familiar with the suite, but I'm also taking next week and the week after that off. So, <laughs> so it's not good timing for it. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe we'll talk about it again in two weeks then. Not, not, not make a, uh, a concrete deadline for, for such action. Just, but maybe, you know, people can look at it in their spare time if they have their copious free time, as I, as I like to say. Um, okay. But yeah, no, that's a really good point. I don't remember if I said this in, in any of the bullets when I was writing random stuff for, our, uh, for the meeting, but the benchmarking is definitely something that we should be addressing. I guess I did have that somewhere here. Yeah, my I have a whiteboard over here that I'm looking at. Like, no, no, I did. I did write this down at some point that our, our performance benchmarks should be at least reviewed. Um, okay. Um, all right. Well, this is enough stuff. This is a fair enough stuff for us to at least chew on in the in the short term. Um, next item for the meeting tonight was uh, the existing documentation. What existing documentation do we have that we could point, you know, collectively point each other at? Because I had thought when that came up is that the rusty dev guide had something here. Um, but then when I looked quickly, I didn't see um, anything in it that, that seemed relevant. So I, I might be just wrong. Um, I mean, it might have only been the query system that's documented in the in the, uh, in the dev guide and not actually incremental. In, oh no, there's a, there is an incre incremental compilation detail chapter that says, so let's see, incremental compilation in detail. Let me uh, link this in the, uh, I see it's part of the, uh, it's, it's part of the book that's about query systems. So I've just posted a link that at least has the docs from some point in time that talks about um, the incremental compiler. And um, it's, it's, it's overall structure. And yeah, I don't know offhand um, how much of this is out of date. I think most of it is probably still pretty up to date. We haven't made huge changes. There, there were some changes that were proposed, um, but I don't think we've made anything that's big enough that would invalidate the, what I see here skimming over it. I do apologize because I wish I had read over this before we had started the meeting. Um, but at the very least, we all can look at it in our, you know, after this meeting um, and, you know, see if it makes sense and perhaps double check that it actually matches the code. That'd be the most ideal thing is to actually, you know, look at this in parallel with the code and see if it makes if it all makes sense together. Um, right, good point. So, so Sandra just posted that there is the, the higher level chapters about the query system itself. That's definitely a place to start before reading this. I, um, I was mentioning that, but I figured that I had the, I, I, I was mute. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what you were saying that I. So, okay. So this is, there is documentation of the incremental compiler, good, because I was, I was not sure if that was the case. Um, and of course, there is the obvious um, approach of just looking at the bugs that are currently tagged um, with the label for incremental compilation in the um, Rust issue database, um, which would be a query like, like this. Um, but I'll, I'll post in Zulip. And there's 102 such bugs open Obviously, a number of them are probably ICEs. So if we just get rid of that, because that's not, I mean, while those are things to fix, um, they aren't like the kind of uh, enhancements that I would uh, maybe want to talk about as things that we could look at doing. Um, no, even this approach is not quite what I wanted. There was, there was some way of looking at like this that I thought gave us a list of like potential things to change. Um, but I can't recall now what the right query is to do it. Uh, duck, 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 duck. <clears throat> In any case, there's definitely things here that talk about like things that Michael Worcester pointed out as being shortcomings in the, in the internal compilation system um, years ago. Um, 
And so there's potential there for things to look at. And oh yeah, so for example, there's this bug um, that so someone earlier, I think it was Wesley mentioned about um, spans being a problem. So as an example of a bug that's filed about this, there is this bug that Michael filed over two years ago about handling spans in a more robust way. Um, and I think that likewise, there is, there's been work in this area um, as recently as May. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, that's okay. That's the person I was trying to think of. There's this PR remove spans from here. That's a prerequisite for what the other things that are going on. Um, and this was filed by this user, um, Camille Gio, Gio um, or C, C J G I L O C. Um, I'll just post the username in, in the, uh, in the Zoom lip. Yeah, so, actually, if you look at, uh, if you look at issues tagged, uh, I guess incremental filed by Michael. Or sir, there's a pretty good set of uh, enhancements there. I guess not. I guess I'm just looking at all of his bugs, but there's a there's quite a bit of overlap with uh, probably the goals of our group. So. Yeah, I would I would not be surprised by that at all. Um, so yeah, we definitely should review these for at least for ideas for things to do. Yeah, even just tag looking for the tag C enhancement might be a, a good improvement over what we are. Uh, what I posted before. So adding like the, the conjunction of incremental and C enhancement gets us a fair amount of interesting stuff. But like you said, also adding Michael Worcester as the author of the issue might also <laughs> have a very targeted set of well-written um, <laughs> well uh, bugs. Um, okay, so these are things to look at. Obviously issue, an issue list is not documentation, but um, I already sort of tried to point it what I think is the most current set of documentation and probably the thing that we would update with uh, more information as we go, um, namely the thing on the Rusty Dev Guy. Uh, so let me just make a note about that. On the... One thing one thing that I, I was wondering is, um, okay, there, there are a lot of issues and uh, some of the stuff is hard to like to reproduce if at least if I'm correct. So I was wondering if, like, uh, is there a some something that we can come up that uh, more or less that we can paste on issues when when they show up and say to like to the reporter, hey, try to do this and this and that, and you would you would give you, give you us some important information or something that we can implement that make the reporters in some way I don't know send something to us. So I definitely have okay. So there's two separate things here. One is improving the um, the protocols in place, either through robots or human effort, in terms of how we can get quicker responses to people who file incremental issues so that we might get, because oftentimes by the time they respond to them, they've already deleted the cache that we need to actually, you know, uh, get, make progress on the bug. So that's one topic is that, about that. and that, might, that was sort of one thing it sounded like you were touching on. But there is a separate topic of ways we could change the compiler itself to make it easier to reproduce these bugs. In particular, I've mused about trying to store information about the previous, or the last build or something like that. So you actually get a diff, you have some easy way to get a diff of the, of the change that was made um, between the state at the time of the, the incremental artifacts that we're using to feed into incremental violations. I'd like to see the diff from what the code looked like at that time, what the code looked like right now. Yeah, and maybe maybe like something to in, in the in the direction of the second thing you were talking about. Think of like a cargo bisect C or a tool, but aimed to to these kind of of issues, like something that the like the reporter could run or I don't know. I I can I have no idea. But uh, no, I <laughs> what, agree. What? Something that I think would be good. It's true, and you make the good point that I in my head I always for some reason associate this thing that we put in the compiler, but you make the point now that it doesn't necessarily have to be in the compiler. It could be something that's part of cargo, which might make it easier to develop and land. Um, yeah. So it's tooling, I think, could be useful here because it is so difficult to reproduce these bugs. 
Um, and it's obviously a big time sink and a big a thing where we often just say we can't do it. If the person's lost the context and we can't reproduce it, we just give up. Right. So yeah, I, I think that that's something I'd like to see work done on. I, I didn't propose as a project group because it's sort of, the problem is it's, it doesn't serve the goals of, it indirectly serves the goals of making you know, incremental compilation develop yeah, yeah. easier to do, but it doesn't directly make incremental compilation better. If anything, it might make it worse in terms of the extra overhead that it might take to store the information. Depending on how it's done, you know, it might add overheads that we don't want to pay. Um, so that's one reason why I didn't propose it concretely, but at the same time, I'd love to see work done on it. So um, I think it's a good, I, I think it's a good thing to explore. I just okay. don't know if I, uh, it's tough. I'd love to see work done on it. I, uh, but I, I'm sitting here saying I can't justify spending time on it myself, I think, which means I have a hard time asking someone else to do so, right? Um, but I don't know. The, the, the fact that you just bring up, brought up the idea of cargo being in charge of it, maybe that improves the, the development time such that it would actually be reasonable to hack something up. Um, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. I, I feel like it, it might be worth investing some amount of time to try to figure out why we're getting ICEs. Like I would, I would expect, oh, the incremental cache just doesn't get used because it's not valid or right. it's this not, is the it's I not had paid time. enough or whatever. But what we're actually seeing looks like we tried to load stuff out of the incremental cache and we got bad data and then the process explodes sometime later. It's some so, in some cases it's been something where there's some invariant in the incremental cache that you know, people have claimed this invariant should hold and it doesn't hold and therefore we want an ice here. That's, and there have been situations where I've said, but we could we could just you know not ice here and we'd be able to compile successfully. And some you know like you said, ignore the incremental cache. And the problem is that then we're going to have people that aren't going to get incremental compilation, right? We're not going to know it. Um, sure. So sure, yeah. I I I would like perhaps it'd be perhaps good to have a situation where we didn't ice in these situations, but rather like you said, stop mm -hmm. using the cache, but also admit a diagnostic saying, hey, like. We, we tried to use your incremental here, but something went wrong. If you could file it, like if you can do this, if you can repeat this, if you can get this, like if you can reproduce this case, yeah. maybe file a bug, but have something where it doesn't cause the whole compilation to, to error out. It's, it's something to think about as, as an approach here, at least to make it so that we're not getting showstoppers. Um, I suppose the problem is that if the cache is invalid, we're detecting in these cases, or we're, or rather, we could be detecting it. But but the reality is that these kinds of invariants that are being broken. They could well be things that we can't always detect, and so we're better off actually trying to fix the real bug and not letting. I don't know enough off the top of my head for all yeah. these cases whether some are cases where we truly can ignore it versus ones where no, the fact this is happening means that we don't even know whether well. I don't know. I was about to say we don't know whether we, whether we can compile successfully or not. But your point is that we could just say we're not used. We could just delete the cache, right? Like don't use the cache to a from scratch build, and then it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess where I'm coming from is I feel like it's better for Rust C to be slow than it is for it to crash. Um, and so, and uh, the impression I have is that our our users in general are pretty willing to file issues. You know, if we ask them to. So even if it doesn't fail the build, but there's a big warning message that says, hey, could you zip this stuff up and post it in an issue? I think we would get a lot of people do that. Um, but it would certainly look better, I think, than if you just get an ICE and, and the compiler boards. Um, especially like sometimes this happens like in CI and then that's kind of extra annoying because you, know, you have people submit a PR or something and then it, it fails because Rust C died and it's not really related to their PR at all. You know, not on on Rustling slash Rust, but on Rust projects. You know, so I think mm. that I I think the only the only thing I'm worried about here is that I've heard I don't remember who said this quote, but there was some like some person made, made a quip when they heard about fault tolerant systems and how they work typically. They said, you know, fault tolerant systems. The problem is the problem with them is that faults that are tolerated don't get fixed. Um, and so this is the question that we would, would we trust our, you know, our community to 
actually still take the effort to report in when these things are failing or when they just these things that are silently not working we wouldn't even know and people just people just continue to complain the compiler is too slow but that's the thing that the bugs will get is the compiler is too slow and then we'll hopefully then find out okay right. the, 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 the only other concern i have is if we if the issue is that we're not doing some sort of validation before we load incremental results then it feels like there's a possibility we're opening the door for miscompilations because we're only getting lucky that we tried to read out of bounds of a slice or something. Right. If we actually read the wrong data, but it was all in bounds, you could get like anything could happen at that that's point. Right. So that's definitely worse. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. That, that that's that's a that's a really good point because um, like uh, we should try. To, to have incremental compilation be correct, right? Uh, like in the sense that it it, it, it works, like uh, it gives the correct output. And and uh, I think that is that, that is actually a very, very important um, objective. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's it's worth it. If we if we start like miscompiling code from from bugs in in incremental, then then it is it is like very serious. I I, I think I yeah. Well, let's explore this. I think that if nothing else, I would love as somebody you know has to deal with compiler triage to suddenly get rid of the influx of ices from the incremental compilation because they're always a headache. And admittedly, mm. the approach I was thinking of was to make it easier to debug those such ices. But Wesley, your suggestion of just stop doing it, stop icing in some way and let the compiler at least finish with a correct answer, that's pretty attractive. In terms yeah, I mean, of, like, I, I, know I, don't, I don't know. Are we are we getting these issues because we're catching you know, a lot of these ICs I've seen are stuff like we try to read way out of bounds on a slice and it right. makes me think that like we just you know we took these bytes off disk and we stuffed them into this structure and it was actually a totally different structure on disk and so we got some crazy thing like this slice is 16 gigabytes long or whatever right. and we tried to read it and that makes me think that we aren't doing enough validation. If the if the ICs we're getting are from the validation, then maybe we shouldn't actually mess with them. Maybe we should, you know, actually actually fix whatever the underlying cause is there. But a lot of the stuff I've seen makes me think we're we're not doing some validations. It depends. So yeah, some of the ICs are about so, internals of the of the compilation system, things about like, you know, I found a red no when a green was expected, right? That's the kind of thing that I encounter where that is an internal invariant of the incremental compiler that it's detecting itself and could, I think, like you say, be um, <clears throat> just stop trying to do incremental compilation in such a case. But the case you're talking about where it's a out of bounds access, that's a, you're right, it's a different story. And we probably should categorize, maybe a good task would be to categorize the ICs into those two buckets, right? Things that are internal invariants and ones that are the invalid states that we need to be fair at validating somehow or, or doing something to prevent or, or just accept that we have to fix them. Um, okay. Um, okay. Um, so by the way, we're at, we're at the one hour mark. Oh, geez. Thank you. That, thank you very much. Okay. Well, I, this has been really useful. Um, so, and we basically have finished, I mean, there's, there's a question with the GitHub group, but I, just, I think I just need to actually create a GitHub group, create or reuse GitHub group, and I'll, I'll, I'll put that. So I'll take on the two action items I have written down so far, which is you know, working out the meeting time for the second alternating meeting, and then create or reuse the GitHub action group, um, GitHub group. So and the only other question is about these other project groups that we sort of have been talking about. So we'll, let's let's wrap it up here. We've sort of got an idea of who I think I think Wesley and Felix, you two will sort of look into um, the cogen unit stuff and maybe you can fire up a proposal for a project group there. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you want help with it. And uh, uh, Santiago, maybe you and I can talk about the query stuff. And Nick, right. enjoy your enjoy your PTO, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great.
Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. All right. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.